Good morning. Welcome to Brown Swamp United Methodist Church. I just wanted to come outside and bring the worship out here and just experience the full canopy of God's creation that reminds us that God is all powerful and he is above all things, but he's also he's also with us and his creation reminds us that um, he saved the last word, the most beautiful word in creation for us and the gift that he gave us when he sent his son to earth to become flesh, to be like us, to live with, li to live with us, and to feel like us. And so as we come into this time of worship, let's just breathe and remember as the breath passes through us and our lungs that we remember that it is the very breath of God that God that God breathed into us at creation. So let us now prepare for worship. Pray with me now. Let us pray. God of all glory, as we come to know your Son through our encounter with the living Scripture today, the Word of God, your Word, would you enlighten our hearts with the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we would be reminded once again that it is Christ, it is Christ, it is Jesus Christ, your Son, who has authority over the church at all times and in all places, in all circumstances. So renew in us again our purpose as Christ's followers, as your church, as the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins, the joy, the love, the passion of the grace that we find in Jesus Christ for all people in all places, all glory and honor be to you. Christ Jesus, amen.
Hear now the word of God, Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has sent a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom, from his wedding canopy and like the strong man runs its course with joy its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit is to the end of them and nothing is hid from its heat the law of the Lord is perfect reviving the soul the decrees of the Lord are sure making the wise the simple the precepts of the Lord are right rejoicing the heart the commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More than be desired, they are than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter than honey, and the drippings of honeycomb. This is the word of God for the people of God. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in Him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how He changed my life completely He did something that no other friend could do no one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. All my life was full of sin when Jesus found me. All my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me. And he led me in the way I ought to go. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Every week the news brings us, it seems like, another 
couple million people have lost their jobs and are um, looking for unemployment from the government. So this time has been trying for so many people. And yet the basic needs that the church has always been called to serve, that is to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, um, give to the poor, visit the sick, and give healing and care wherever we can. That is still our mission. And so we have an even greater need to serve in our community, in our state, in our nation, and in our world. And the most basic mission is to continue to make sure that the least of these, those who are the most unreachable, find a way to the church, that we would never be a stumbling block. And so as you give this morning, know that your generosity is going to bless people outside of this church. It's going to be used to bless people who are crying out in need and feel like they're not being heard. So let us continue our worship with the giving of our offerings and God's tithes back to Him. I was recently watching a show, or started watching a show called Dead Like Me. The show is about a young woman who is tragically killed, and then she's in this kind of afterlife on Earth, and she is uh, she's given the task of being a grim reaper. And she's given this task by other grim re reapers that she meets um, after, after she dies. And it, there's a scene where she is uh, having uh, a meal in a diner with these grim reapers and she asked them well then then God exists right because if I've died and then I'm in this life then God must exist and the grim reapers or angels I'm not sure what they are because um, they're all kind of in a purgatory or middle existence between uh, life on earth and, and heaven or hell um, their answer to that is is that they didn't know you know, mass media or popular media, pop culture, the TV shows that we watch, the movies that we watch, generally always portray God as the sort of um, far away, distant, uh, powerful being that that doesn't care about us. The the sort of old man, white beard. I'm watching from afar in a throne. Sometimes he's portrayed as, you know, a puppet master that that's, has complete control over our lives and is, is making things happen in our life purely for his, for his entertainment. And, you know, reading the whole of Scripture, that's not who, that's just not who God is. Yes, it's true. God is... God is the all-powerful being. He is above and outside and, and spoke all creation into being. He is the Almighty. He is, he is worthy of all our praise, all of the glory. But He's also close. He's present with us. He, Genesis 2 portrays God um, um, creating us with his, with his hands, with His bare hands in the dirt from the dust, holding us, molding us, and breathing life 
into us. So God is both great and mighty and above, but he is also tender and caring and compassionate and holding each and every one of us individually. You know, when I when I'm in nature, it's a it's just a great opportunity for me to process the greatness of God, the greatness of his God and yet the tenderness and the care that he has um, for creation, but also for each and every one of us. It's mind-boggling to me that the same God who, who designed all of this, and, and even in this broken and imperfect state that came about after the fall, and when humankind rebelled against God and God's love, it's still so amazing to me, the creation, and that the same hand that created all of that created me and created you and scripture says that he knitted us together in our mother's womb he knew us then and he spoke our name i want to share with you a song that has great meaning for me it always takes me into this incredible place of worship it's called so will i God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the very God is great. God is mighty. But he is also, he's also approachable. He's involved. He is with us. And so God's power, it is complex, but it's also so simple. You know, I, I see God's um, tiniest attention to detail in the, that new green spring growth of the cypress tree leaf but also in the complex web of the cypress swamp ecosystem. We see God, universal power in the thundercloud that delivered the Israelites from, uh, from bondage and captivity in Egypt. And we see God's, uh, we see the, the, the tiniest whisper of God's breath, his, his personal presence with us in that still, quiet voice that he's whispering each and every one of us in our ears. There's never been a greater distance from God's mightiest power to the depth, the lowest of lows that Jesus experienced as he gave up his rightful claim and glory in heaven to die for us on the cross. I want you to hear these words. Um, I'm reading from the Gospel of John, the 17th chapter, beginning with verse 9. The Gospel writer writes, This is Jesus speaking. I'm asking on their behalf. You see, he's praying to God. I'm not asking on behalf of the world but on behalf of those whom you gave me, 
because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. I have been glorified in them, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Jesus knows what's about to go down when he's praying this. He knows the horrible uh, suffering, the torture, the brutality um, before his death, and then his death, and then the trial all the way down into hell. He knows that this is about to happen, and yet he turns the focus away from himself to us. Now, any one of us, when we're about to face a trial or to, uh, to go into something that's going to be difficult. We tend to, to, to put it in, in the framework of ourselves. Don't we, if we're praying to God, it's, it's I, 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 me, me, me. But Jesus, the one who knew the suffering that none of us will ever, ever know because he, he took it upon himself so that we would never have to, Jesus turns it. He's showing us how special each and every one of us are to him. And this is the one um, who has traveled the greatest distance from, from glory to death, a greater sacrifice than any of us will ever know. And instead of him taking all the glory, he's given that to us. I want you to listen to these words. He says, he says he's doing this on behalf of us. He's doing this so that we would not be lost and so that Jesus is glorified in us. He says he has guarded us. He has not let one of us be lost. He is asking God to sanctify us. He, has, he, is, he is reminding us that God sent him into the world for our sakes, that he is sanctified so that we may also be sanctified. You know, when we, when we contrast the heights of God's power with the lowliness and the humiliation that Christ experienced for us, when we think about that contrast, I think that's when we can most likely comprehend God's love for us and what God did for us through Jesus Christ. You know, God's power of creation is still at work. I was just, uh, it was reported this week that there are planets still being formed, that they are, they are spinning into creation from the dust that is in space, the space, the ever-expanding, that's now a 12 billion light-year old universe that God has, has created, that, that His power is still at work creating both things as distant and mighty as planets, but, but also things as close as, as lightning bugs. The lightning, but the lightning bug, the planet, but the plants, the rocks and the trees, they cry out, they worship God. They were all made to worship God. And so am I, and so are you.
in all of this creation that is, that is spinning and becoming at the same time that God, through Jesus Christ and our yes to Jesus Christ, where we have, we have recognized our sinfulness and we have, we have been honest with God about our sinfulness and, and wanting to be set free from that and wanting to be set right by that yes, by that acknowledgement of sin, that confession, and that yes to Jesus Christ, that we too are being spun in sanctification that is being made more and more in the image of Christ. That in, that in this great process of sanctification, that everything points, all of creation points back to God, that we too for the world will point back to God. All those who desperately need to hear a word a word that God is not just some puppet master, but he is here with us. God has chosen you. You have meaning. Your life has meaning. You are precious and redeemed. If the stars were made to worship so loud If the mountains back so alive. If the oceans roll your brightness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes away, send it so Lord Jesus, in you we see awesome power. You triumph over death and you bring forth new life. You stand over all earthly powers. You are the head of the church. Yet we often fail to acknowledge this power in our lives. 
in our church, we see violence in the world, we see injustice in our communities, we see hunger and need among our neighbors. We see longing for something more, and we see failures and faults in our own lives. And all these things, God, we confess we feel powerless. We feel out of control. Forgive our hesitance to call on you. Forgive us when we, when we forget that you're not the backup plan, but you are the main, the only plan. Forgive us in our propensity to rely on ourselves. Forgive us our reluctance to acknowledge your supreme power over all other people. Forgive us, God, and speak your words anew to us today. Help us to hear those words of power fresh today like we never have before, God, because we need them. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And now, God, as we have confess to you our shortcomings. Help us to hear your words of grace and assurance. As Jesus said to his disciples before he ascended to you, he said, repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in my name to all the nations. Repent then, all of you followers, of Jesus Christ. Allow the power of Jesus Christ from the Most High to the lowest of lows. All that power be transformational in your life as you allow it to do. Receive forgiveness, beloved children, chosen, precious, and called by God. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's go to God together as a people, a body who 
who love one another and support one another and, and fully rely on Jesus. Let us pray. Jesus, he told his disciples in those final instructions to go back. Go back to Jerusalem and wait. Lord, we are not good at waiting for anything. We want to know what to do right now. We want clear instructions. We want the plan all laid out. We want our hands on the steering wheel. We want to project the end results and everything in between. God, we have some real control issues to overcome and they are, they are showing up now more than ever. Take our spirits, release the need for control that we all have. Take it. Help us to place our total trust in your abiding love and presence. Give us patience when we need it. Give us persistence when we need it. Give us self-control when we need it, God. First and foremost, as we work together side by side, shoulder to shoulder, brushing against one another in the mission and ministries that you have given us to do. And God, this morning, we, we each in our different places, in our hearts, we bring to you names and cares and needs that are, that are within us, that we bring. And in this time of silence, God, we, we name those in our hearts to you and we entrust you with them. God, as we place these needs into your hands, the only one that can bring comfort and healing and mercy, remind us that we also stand in need of the same mercies, the same forgiveness, the same delivery from sin and death each and every day that we choose to hand it over to you and to say yes, give us courage, God, to accept that love and strength. Give us resilience and take risks to say yes to follow you at all costs. Help us to be the greatest witnesses to your love that we can be and to love in all that we do, all people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, today we remember those men and women who have died in service to our country. We pause to reflect on the lives sacrificed while protecting our freedoms. We confess that most days we are oblivious to the price paid by men and women in uniform, and yet we live every day in the freedom they laid down their lives to give us. So today, we recall the words of Jesus when he said, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And let us not forget that each life lost represents other lives that are left to pick up the pieces. We lift up widows and widowers, brothers and sisters, parents and children of the service men and women who fought valiantly for our country. We ask for your peace and comfort to never leave them. God, we thank you for the lives of these men and women. May their memory and their service never be forgotten. Amen. The sounds of God's creation are all around us. The rocks, the water, the trees, they cry out to God. They fall down before God. 
So as we go forth from this time together, may the song, the sounds, the wonder, the power, the glory of all creation, of which you are God's centerpiece. May you go forth with that truth on your heart and your deepest beings that as Jesus has prayed that you would be sanctified. Go forth, brothers and sisters, beloved, chosen, precious, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.